Brenda. Hi, Unit. Good to see you both. So if you show up early and you don't have any family jumping on you right now, feel free to lay on your mat. And if you have a block or wheel, you can place that underneath your back. It's just nice to do for the next minute or two while we wait until 12 and for other people to join us. Where is my wheel? So if you only have a block or even a bolster, just place it in the mid back area. Have a lay down. Hi Kumar, happy Monday. And you can just start here. Happy Monday, happy Monday. I'd like to say it's a happy Monday. I don't know, I have a curse on my house I feel like right now. Uh, it's pretty funny. It's funny and like a, if I was a, you know, 8 p.m. comedy show on TV, it'd be hilarious, right? But when it's your real life, it's, it's not that funny. <laughs> but so, um, like two weeks ago, my steam mop that I have ended up breaking, like it fell out of the closet. You know, if you live in California, we have these tiny closets, right? They're like this wide and this big, you know, they're just like not big at all. If you were trying to hide as a kid, it would literally fit one kid in there. It's like tiny. So we have our steam mop in there and our vacuum cleaner in there and a couple winter coats. <laughs> That's pretty much all it can fit. So two weeks ago, I'm opening up the closet to get the vacuum out because I want my floors to be clean so there's not crap all over my mat when I'm teaching, right? The steam mop falls out and it just shatters. The handle shattered into like 100 pieces. So I was like, oh great, that's broken. And then a few days later, our oven caught on fire, like the broil coil at the top. It exploded and caught on fire. Uh, my husband replaced it with a new one. Thankfully, we didn't have to get a new oven, but that was like, okay, great. Something else happened. And then this morning, I got the vacuum cleaner out once again to make sure my floors are clean. And I snapped the handle <laughs> off the vacuum. Like, don't ask me how, but the entire handle, it's like this thick of a handle, right? And just poof, snapped. And so I'm like, okay, that's, uh, it's entertaining, right? <laughs> so things happen in threes. I hope I'm done. Although I did joke with my husband, I'm like, if there's any like major roof issues, it's gonna happen in the next week. If there's a rainstorm, we're gonna know, right? <laughs> it's just fun. So that's teaching me right now, the art of right non-attachment, a parigraha, a letting go, which is my theme pretty much for the last few months. Um, and it just keeps on bringing itself back into my life. So maybe there's something in your life that keeps nudging you about just letting it go parigraha, whether it be something that you're holding on to, a relationship, a, a promise that you made, that maybe your heart's just not in anymore, anything like that. So we can use our yoga practice to sit here and think about why are we still holding on to these things, you know? Why do I need that vacuum cleaner? It's okay, right? If I have dirt all over my mat, it's just dirt not a big deal but we are attached to the idea of a clean home or a clean body means something yeah and maybe I need to let go of that attachment maybe it's not that important maybe I can just let it whatever it is let it be as the Beatles say <laughs> all right so if you're still laying on your block awesome if you're on a wheel even better we're gonna be here for another minute or so so if you're just now joining us my name is Leslie Germain a parigraha, letting go is the theme for today. And we have a request for back bends. If you want to add in a request, make sure to comment in the live chat, say hello. But I know some back bends will be here. I was already planning on it, so I'm happy you mentioned it. Okay, so if you still have that block underneath your low back, push your feet into the ground to remove the block. If you're not on your back yet, find your way there. Happy baby pose. And then start to roll side to side, left to right. And just feel it out. Maybe your hips are lifted. Maybe they're low to the ground. Maybe you'd rather stay still and not sway left to right. It's up to you. 
Close your eyes and ask your body where does it want to go right now as you lay on your back. Perhaps you want to lengthen your legs, letting go of your feet, maybe hug your knees into your chest. letting your nervous system and your body settle down a little bit more. Mm -hmm. If you're still in happy baby, release your feet and kick your feet right, right up to the sky. Flexing the feet and then pointing, flexing and pointing, flexing and pointing. And then we're gonna try a floint. So basically a floint is you are pointing with the feet and then spread your toes as wide apart as possible so they're fanning out. It's almost like you're wearing high heels, Barbie feet. Mm -hmm. We're just playing with the strength in the toes and in the tops of the feet. And then point and flex. And just move between those three, maybe start to draw big circles with your toes and reverse direction. Okay, draw the right knee into your chest, give it a hug nice and tight, and allow the left leg to go out 45 degrees. Lifting the head and shoulders off the ground, maybe your nose gets a little bit closer to your knee. Try to squeeze the knee in a little bit tighter. Mm -hmm. And now you have a, ch a chance to either bring your hand, letting go of your leg, and reaching your fingertips for the front of your mat. Maybe you reach your arms up towards the sky. Or maybe you bring your arms parallel with the ears. Keep bringing that knee into your chest as though you're still squeezing it with your hand. You're not letting go. You're using that core, the hip, the abs to compress the knee in. Uh-huh. One more breath. And now exhale. Bring your hands together. Take them around to the right outer thigh and reach forward. Okay, we're going to do five more of those. Bring your hands wherever they were and exhale. Twist. Inhale. Exhale. Three more. You can do it. Right knee pulls into the chest. Last one. Awesome. Hold here for three and two and one. Exhale. Happy baby or give yourself a hug. Whew, doing a little oblique work. Mm -hmm. Hi, Leah, Whitney, Melody. Good to see you all. We're going to switch sides here kicking those legs back up. And before we draw the left knee into the chest, let's do just a few knee hinges. Mm -hmm. All right, left knee draws into the chest, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And then the right leg lowers 45 degrees, 30 degrees, maybe 10 degrees, just depending on how you feel this afternoon. Head and shoulders lift off the ground. You choose which variation. It starts easiest by reaching forward it's a little harder depending on how far you reach back. Hold here for two. And then in one more breath, we're going to bring our hands together and twist over to the left. Inhale. Exhale, twist. Inhale. Four more. Squeeze that left knee into the chest. I know it's going to keep pulling away because we don't want to use those hip flexor muscles at the same time, but we're going to do it. Two left. Last one and hold here for three. Can you smile? Two, keep pulling that knee in. Last breath, yes. Inhale, open. Happy baby pose. And then we're gonna rock and roll ourselves forward into a standing position. Maybe you rock and roll and slowly push your feet into the ground as you root to rise. Maybe you're working on that. And you just come up a little bit, but you can't push yourself up all the way, then bring your hands down and allow your hands to help guide you, okay? Eventually you'll build the strength. Your body will find those little micro muscles that you need to get where you wanna go. But if we don't practice, we'll never get there. Rooting your feet here. Inhale, sweeping your arms up, palms touch. Interlacing your fingers. I'm gonna drop down on my knees so you guys can see my hands, okay? Interlacing your fingers, pushing your palms up to the sky, and then leaning over to your right, gazing up to the left. Rooting that left heel, that left foot, seeing if you can find a little more space from that hip bone through the outer line of the armpit. One more inhale. 
And then coming back through center, switching sides. Yes, honey. Maybe after class, okay? Say hi to everybody. That is called kick the buddy. Sounds like a very nice game. <laughs> no. Say hi to your friends. Hello. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Gotta love iPads. <laughs> Inhale back through center. If you're wondering how I keep my kids in their room for an hour, that's about it. I don't have a grandparent nearby. So my iPad is my babysitter. <laughs> Inhale, reaching up towards center. Exhale, softening the knees, forward fold. Anara, can you shut your door, please? Inhale, hands to shins, halfway lift. All right, now, to your room. Exhale, soften the knees, forward fold. Two more, inhale. Exhale. One more breath, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Grabbing your elbows here, letting your ha head hang heavy. If you were looking at the camera, you might have saw Layla came out, also asked for me to download something for her. <laughs> Maybe I need to teach them about a parigraha as well. Let go of the apps. Take a deep inhale here. Exhale, hands come down to the ground, step your right foot back, and then your left. High plank. So you can choose here in your plank pose whether you want to drop down to the knee. We're going to come into side plank on the right side. So you know if your wrist is feeling a little achy today, perhaps drop the knee down. You know, there's no shame in that. Being smart. Another way in case you always feel wrist pain is to pivot your hands so your thumb is facing more towards the front of the mat and your fingertips are facing away. So maybe try that if you typically have wrist pain. Slide into the outer pinky edge side of the right foot, and then inhale, send that left arm up overhead. Mm -hmm. We're going to be here about five breaths so you can feel it. Finding steadiness and ease wherever you are. Maybe you reach the top arm up overhead to create length from your fingertips through your heel. Two more breaths, send the hips up just a little bit higher. And then exhale, lifting that top foot, dropping it a foot behind you, hips lift up for a tiny wild thing. Don't worry about going into your fullest expression. It's your very first back bend. Just a little heart opening here. Feel it out. One more breath. Exhale. Left hand comes down to the ground. High plank pose. Inhale. Exhale, knees, chest, chin. Keep the booty lifted in the air. Pull your knees in towards your hands. Mm-hmm. And then drop everything down to the ground. Exhale, lifting into Cobra Pose. Inhale, lift up a little higher. Exhale, lower. So we'll do that a few more times, okay? Take an inhale here. Exhale, Cobra. You only go so high up that your hands can lift, okay? So we can drop down again. Don't even use your hands here. Exhale, Cobra. Hands come down. Inhale, keep a soft in the elbows. A little deeper. Yeah, exhale. Let's do that one more time. Take a deep inhale. Exhale, Cobra. Inhale. Just lift a little bit. Don't go into your low back. Exhale, Child's Pose. Downward Facing Dog. So at any point, you can come into Child's Pose if that feels nice for you. In your Downward Dog, feel free to walk your dog out. It's your choice to explore. Perhaps you want to rainbow the feet, lifting up onto the toes, rolling to the right side. Really push the hips up and away from you. And then roll to the other side if you chose to rainbow. We'll be here three more breaths wherever you went. Inhale. Exhale, bend the knees, step, jump, or float to the front of the mat. Inhale, hands to shins or fingertips on the ground, halfway lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, sweeping the ground away, sending your arms up, palms step to the top. Exhale, release, mountain pose. Inhale, chair. Exhale, palms come together, twisting over to your right. Let the left elbow cross over the right thigh if you can. 
Maybe you stay here, maybe you feel like doing a little shoulder opening belly twist by reaching your fingertips away from each other. And you'll be there for three. And two. Last breath. Inhale, come back through center. Exhale to the other side. Feel out your feet. Maybe you lean back into your heels or toes a little bit more. Find the center. Whenever you're ready, expand the arms. Close your eyes. Maybe your left eye. And then your right. Eventually working on closing both. Feeling the pose from within. One more breath. Beautiful. Inhale, back through center. Exhale, down and out. Inhale, reaching the head forward, tailbone back. Exhale, left foot goes back, followed by the right, high plank. So we're going to do Vashisthasana, side plank on the other side. So if you wanted to pivot that hand out to the side, go ahead. Your left thumb will be point pointing forward, and then start to shift your weight over. And if that doesn't feel good, once again, find where it does. It doesn't have to be a 90 degree angle with the hands. It can be 45, it can be 15. Play with it. You know, this is your time, this at home practice. You can refine these little movements that maybe you've always done, like you've always had your index finger pointing forward. Try shifting it. You've been here about five breaths. Yeah, we'll do one more breath. Lift the hip up a little higher in your side plank. Hopefully you were there. <laughs> Top arm reaching. And then lifting that right leg, dropping it behind you for a baby wild thing. Working on getting the soles of the foot down to the ground. Hips push up. And let your arms move away and wide so you can feel a shoulder opener here if you'd like. Mm -hmm. One more breath. Exhale. Right hand comes down to the ground. Inhale here. Exhale, knees down, chest down, chin down. Engage the Uddiyana Bandha, squeezing the anus, yes, and now pull the knees in towards the heels of the hands. One more breath. Exhale, release everything down to the ground. Bringing your hands behind your back, interlacing your fingers. Inhale, rise. Where can you soften the shoulders, perhaps? The neck. Close your eyes here. A little easier to close your eyes here, yeah? <laughs> Can you lift your hands a little bit further away from your body? Can you lift the low rib cage off the ground? It's just a question. If it doesn't work, let it go. Aparigraha, one more breath. Exhale, lower. Release your hands, rest your other cheek. Maybe you bend the knees and windshield wiper side to side. And then finding your way into downward facing dog, whether you come into child pose or push up through plank to get there. Inhale, send that right leg up high, keeping the hips square as you inhale, left heel lifts. Exhale, lower the left heel. Bending the right knee, keeping the hips square. So I'm not opening up my hip here. My knee is pointing down to the ground. Heel is lifting up. Lift the left heel again. Exhale, lower the left heel, right leg stays lifted. Looking in between your hands, in between your thumbs, bend that left knee and do a little hop. And a little hop. Try to keep that right leg exactly it is, just a little hop, an inch or so. Claw the ground, one more time. Maybe you find a little more air time. Yes. Exhale, lower that left foot down to the ground, right foot comes forward. Inhale, lower the hips. Lunge. Exhale, bend that back leg, pyramid pose. So we're trying to get that right leg straight, and it's okay if you have a big bend in this back knee. Over time, you might be able to straighten it, but don't worry about it. Keep the stretch in the front leg. Exhale, back into your low lunge. Let's do that two more times. And then come back into that pyramid version. Maybe there's a bend in the back knee, maybe there's not. Last one. And then coming back into that low lunge, 
Left hand stays where it is. Right arm comes up for a twist. So if you're having a day where you want to just go at 50%, perhaps keep that left knee down. Otherwise, tuck the back foot, lift the knee, and draw the right rib cage back, left rib cage toward the leg. One more inhale. Exhale, right hand back down to the ground. Left leg slowly draws forward to meet the right. Inhale, chair pose. Pushing your feet into the ground, rising. Exhale, Tadasana. Taking that right leg forward, crossing it over the left, coming into eagle legs. Mm -hmm. So I'll face you so you can see me. Right leg crosses over. Once you sink the hips down, perhaps you're able to do a double twist, getting the ankle around the shin. But if you're sitting up super high, that's gonna be impossible to do. Another hint to get that double bind is to bring the thigh up a little bit higher. So the higher the thigh goes, the better chance you have of finding the ankle around the shin bone. You can see if I started here, there's not a lot of space for me to twist. So if I bring the leg up a little higher, then come down low, maybe now you have that chance. I don't know, try it out. All right, left arm reaches across, right arm on top, bending the elbows, eagle arms here, steady gaze. Steady breath. What happens if you close your left eye? What about your right eye? What about both eyes? Oh man. And if you fall, that's okay. You get back up. Three more breaths wherever you are. If you're scared to close your eyes, ask yourself why. Where's the fear? Where can you let go of the fear? And then take a deep inhale. Arms and leg release. Exhale. Mountain pose. Big shoulder rolls here. If you have the space, let your arms go out wide. It's like you're doing reverse butterfly. If you were a swimmer, arms are going back and big circles around. And then reverse direction. <laughs> okay, we're going to do eagle on the other side. Right leg is our root. Pick that left leg up high to see how high you can get over that thigh. Sit down in your chair and then squeeze that left ankle or left shin until eventually maybe your foot can hook around the right. Mm -hmm. This time the right arm comes across, left arm on top. Bend the elbows, reach the fingertips up. If this is too much, you can always just hug your shoulders. And if you're hugging your shoulders, try to find more space in that back body. Mm -hmm. Can you sit a little lower? Let's try closing our eyes again. Right eye first. <laughs> and then the left eye. And then both eyes. Did you do it? Are you still there for three? Two? One. Let it go. Reach your arms and leg out wide. Exhale. Mountain pose. Pause and notice. If you are hesitant to closing both eyes, why? Was it fear because your body was trying to protect you? Was it fear because you don't like to fail? I have a seven-year-old. She doesn't like doing things at me when she knows she's not good at it, right? It's very common. But then if we do things that we're not good at, how do we grow? How do we become better at things? And I feel like since we're at yoga, we all know we're not good at things. There are certain poses that we're good at. There are certain poses we are not good at. And the work really is feeling at ease, even in the challenging poses. Just as happy as you might feel in triangle, feel that in eagle with your eyes closed. All right? Inhale, sweeping your arms up. Exhale, soften the knees, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step or float back, high plank. Take one inhale here. Exhale, knees down, chest down, chin down. Squeeze everything in towards the midline. Exhale, body lowers. Take one inhale as you untuck the toes. Exhale, cobra. Inhale, lift a little higher. 
exhale lower. Bend the knees, reach back for the heels, the shins, the ankles. Dhanurasana, bow pose. So this is basically almost going into wheel. Imagine you're flipped over on your back. So kick those knees up a little bit higher. Take your feet into your hands. And then exhale, release. Hands come out in front of you. Sphinx pose. Bending that left leg, pivoting the elbow so the fingertips are more towards center, and then reaching back, and then exhale, unwind again. So we're just moving a little bit. Left arm reaches, we're not grabbing it. Exhale, lower. Back into Sphinx. One more time, reach. Maybe you find your foot. If you find your foot, push your heel into your sit bones. Mm -hmm. If you have any back pain, lower the rib cage down slightly the belly down, and just push your hand into your foot. If you're able to flip the grip, go ahead. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. I'll break it down in a future class. One more breath. Exhale, release, down to your belly. Let your head rest, maybe windshield wiper side to side. We're going to go into bow pose once again. This time our arms are reaching on the inside edges, the big toe edge of our feet. So usually we grab the outside edge. This time we go to the inside edge. Thumbs are pointing up. As you lift the knees off the ground, push your feet into your hands and allow this, the collarbone, the front chest to soften and widen. One more inhale. inhale. Exhale, release. Sphinx pose, elbows, forearms come down to the ground. This time that left arm pivots so the palm is facing more towards the center. Bend that right leg and then reach back. Don't worry about grabbing it and come back down. And then lift up and twist. Come back down. Last one. Lift the rib cage off the ground, twist to the side, find your foot. As you find your foot, push the heel down and allow the belly to reconnect with your mat, especially if you have any pain in the low back, the psoas. If you're like me, your right knee is likely not pointing directly towards the back of your mat. The goal is to have the knee pointing more back versus to the side. But that's just the work I need, right? I'm not dealing with it today. Maybe on a perfectionist day I would, but today I'm going to let it go. It's all right. One more breath. Keep pushing that heel down a little bit more. Exhale, release. Come down to your belly. Rest your other cheek. Windshield wiper. This time walk your knees so they're mat distance apart. And then let your feet come together. So it's like upside down butterfly pose. Can you let your knees go a little bit wider? So you can actually come in to an upside down butterfly pose, especially if you have super open hips. Don't worry if your feet are still lifted. Keep pulling your knees apart. Maybe your knees get a little bit closer to the torso. Where can you soften? Where can you let go? Last breath. Exhale, release, pushing your knees up off the air in the air. So then you can allow your legs to reach back out. Hands come under the shoulders, tuck your toes, either child's pose or plank into downward facing dog. Inhale, setting that left leg up high. Keep the hips square. Lift the right heel off the ground. Exhale, lower. Bend that left leg. So we're keeping the hips square and we're just trying to get the heel to our sit bones and then lift the right heel off the ground. Exhale, lower. So you might just play here with lifting the right heel as high off the ground as possible and keeping that left knee lifted as well. Exhale. Or maybe you want a little air time, bending that right knee and do a little hop. It helps if you have something steady to look at, steady drishti, and you hop. So eventually you might be able to jump into a stag handstand from here as we learn to hop a little higher. But if you are practicing with jumping into handstand, 
keep that left leg lower than hip height so you don't fall over into a back bend. But like I said, you can just lift that right heel, last one. Mm -hmm. Exhale, left foot drops in between your hands. Lunge as your hip lowers down to the ground. Shift your gaze forward. How did you do? Did you get some air time? Yeah. Exhale, bend that back leg. Keep a nice bend in the knee. Pyramid pose, sort of. It's a play on pyramid. It's like halfway built, yeah. And then moving back and forwards into your lunge. It's a pyramid variation. You can keep that right leg straight if you'd like. It's your body. How intense are your muscles right now? Mm -hmm. Last breath into your pyramid version. Low lunge. Right hand comes down to the ground. You can drop that knee down as your left arm reaches up for a twist. So once again, dealer's choice. You can keep the knee down, you can tuck the back foot, lift the knee, and then really draw the left rib cage back as the right rib cage draws in to the thigh. Two more breaths wherever you are. Exhale, the left hand comes down to the ground. Putting weight into that left foot as you draw that right foot forward to meet the left. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, taking your hands, sliding them underneath your feet. Bending your knees as much as you need to so you can get your hands nice and deep underneath your feet. Now, if this feels too much, you don't have to bring them towards the front of your toes. You can take them to the outer heel and try that and see if that gives you any release on your wrist. Let your elbows peel away from each other out wide for three. And two. Last breath. Maybe you wiggle your toes to massage the wrist crease. And then exhale, bringing your hands back out. Chair pose. Exhale, twisting over to your right. Mm-hmm. Keep going down, keep going down into a toe squat. See if you can keep that left elbow over the right thigh. Hands come down to the ground. You can see we're about to go into side crow here. So a nice trick to go into side crow is instead of taking that right hip over to the right elbow, walk your feet forward, keep walking them forward, and then eventually your legs will be supported on that left arm. Look at your feet, let your feet float off the ground. Keep the hips lifted for three. And if you fall, that's okay. Two, just get back up and try again. Walk those feet forward, last breath. And exhale, back into that twisted toe squat. Hands come to heart center. Mm -hmm. If you're able to, bring your knees down to the ground. Keep your toes tucked for a nice deep stretch in the back of the feet. Maybe your hands peel back, walking back. Have your fingertips facing towards the back of the mat and then push your sternum up. So you're getting toe stretch here, the fascia behind the feet, the fronts of the thighs. You'll feel a contraction in the upper back and maybe you're creating more space in the front of the chest. One more breath. I love this pose when you want to go into back bends. It's one of my favorites. Gaze up if you'd like. Exhale, walk your hands back in if you chose to go there. We're gonna do toe squat on it. Well, actually let's do a downward dog in between sides so you can release your toes a little bit. Tabletop position, little toe tap, toe tap. Downward facing dog. Inhale, lift both heels off the ground. Exhale, lower. Inhale, bend the knees, looking forward, take a deep exhale, and then jumping yourself to the outside edges of your hands for Malasana low squat. So it's up to you, how's your energy level today? You can stay here in your low squat, otherwise join me for five power plies as we keep our hands together, push up, 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 straighten the legs. Exhale, arms widen into a big circle, bend the knees, low squat. Let's do that four more times, inhale. Exhale, close your eyes here. Feel the energy you cultivate, inhale. 
Two more. Beautiful, everybody power plie up, inhale, rise. Exhale, mountain pose, stepping your feet together. So we're gonna do that side crow on the other side. Palms come together, chair pose. Twisting over to your left. Allow the sit bones to keep coming down, 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 down until eventually they're resting on your heels. So if you're not able to get that elbow around the outer thigh, feel free to really twist. So I like to take my left hand over to my legs and push to allow my arm to cross over. Because if your arm is not there, you're not gonna be able to ever try to practice getting into side crow. Left hand comes down. As I start to tiptoe my feet forward, tip, 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 toe, to keep walking forward, look towards those toes, keep the hips lifted, maybe the feet lift. Claw the ground for three. How are you doing? Two. If you fall, laugh, right? One. Exhale, lower. Back into that low toe squat. Yay! Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step or jump back. High plank. Inhale. Exhale, knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, send that right leg up high, stack the hips. Push your hands evenly into the ground. Notice that the left or the right hand, the fingertips or the heel of the hand are distributing much of the weight. Try to even it out. Exhale, knee to chest, a little round of the spine, keep the hips high. Inhale, kick it back out. Stack the hips. Exhale, draw it in. One more, inhale, kick it out wide. Bend the knee this time, look underneath the left armpit. Maybe you see yourself lifting the dog as that right leg drops behind you. Left arm reaches up. Soften here. One more breath. Exhale, right hand drops down to the ground. Inhale, send that right leg up high. Exhale, bring that right foot through, warrior two on the inhale. So if you ever wanted to go from three-legged dog, or sorry, three-legged wheel, flipping the dog, into wheel, if you go to my Leslie Germain Yoga, yeah, that's right, I'm promoting myself. I have a YouTube, Leslie Germain Yoga. My last video, Intermediate and Advanced class, I show you how to go from flip the dog directly into wheel and then back again. So if that's something you've been wanting to play with, maybe watch that. On flexibility today, feel free to bring your hand down to the ground or on the inside of a block. Mm -hmm. If you're like me and you're already pretty flexible and you need to do more strength work, your nemesis, right hand lifts, bring it to your left chest. If that still is not enough for you, if you're still breathing like so easy, right arm with the left parallel for three. And two. One, inhale, coming back up, warrior two, pivot your feet so the toes are pointing towards the edge of your mat. Inhale, reach your arms out wide. Exhale, hinge from the hips, forward fold. Prasarita, Padottanasana, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you choose. Which version do you want? Close your eyes here. Go inside. So with your eyes closed, you can become even more aware of your body. Are you collapsing on the arches of your feet? If so, push out through the pinky edge side of your feet. The arches will lift slightly. Awesome. Is more of the weight in your heels? If so, shift your weight forward just a little bit so you're in your toes. And when you do that, you're able to lower your head a little bit more to the ground and maybe a deeper hip flexion contraction here. See what happens. We'll be here for three more breaths, wherever you chose to go with your arms. Maybe one of you went into headstand from here, if you did. Slowly lower all the way down to the ground. Mm -hmm. Inhale, bringing your hands halfway. Dropping the knees down to the ground. Frog pose. Who doesn't love frog, right? Yeah, let's do it. Frog pose. <laughs> so knees are down. Feet are in the same line as your knees. And allow your knees to widen. 
until eventually you can come down to your forearms, either to the floor or on a couple blocks or pillows. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you pull your hips back and forward, back and forward and explore. Maybe you pit, tuck or tilt the pelvis. You know, not forcing yourself into a pose, but playing with it in your body and exploring where are you holding on to tension? Where might you still be storing some fear? I can't do that. If I do that, I'll break. We're about halfway through our froggy pose. To start to settle in wherever you are able to soften and breathe and close your eyes. Thank you, Marty. <laughs> Okay, walking your hands back towards center, bringing your knees close to in together, sitting back on your heels. So we're gonna do a little bit of low lasana. Everybody's favorite, I know. You love low lasana, don't you? You don't even have to let me know. You don't have to comment. I can feel the love. So maybe we do it for the rest of the practice? No? Okay, we'll just try it one time then. Okay, so if you wanna find blocks, Blocks are amazing for the lasana. It is not cheating. It is using intelligence, yes? It's like child's pose. When you go into child's pose, that is using intelligence of your own intuition. You're just being smart. So use blocks if you need them. Hands come down to the blocks. I like to have mine halfway between my knees and my thighs. Dropping your torso down to meet your thighs and then begin to straighten your arms and try to keep those knees glued into the chest. So you might be right there on the tops of your feet and then exhale lower. So you can play with that, just lifting and lowering, building the core strength and the hip strength needed to eventually float your feet off the ground. If you're ready to float the feet off the ground, keep the knees glued into your chest and then shift your sternum forward. So your shoulders are gonna go way over your fingertips and then do a hamstring curl, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze for five, four, where are you? Three, two, one, exhale, yay! Uh-huh. Wrist circles. If you were able to get into Lolasana, take a picture later, tag me on Facebook or Instagram. I love to share my students' successes and failures. Yeah, they're both good, they're both lessons. And then we're gonna come into Downward Facing Dog. Once you're in your Downward Facing Dog, lift that left leg up to the sky. Stack those hips. Steady the breath. Exhale, draw your knee into your chest. Inhale, kick it back up high, stack the hips a little bit more. Left hip over the right. Exhale, knee to chest. Keep the hips high, yeah, last one. Inhale, kick it up. This time you can bend the knee, look underneath the right armpit. See if you can see that dog, flip your dog. Left leg slowly lowers with control as your left arm lifts. Hips push towards the sky and allow your heart to open here. Fill it with that love that you might have felt on Mother's Day or given on Mother's Day for two. You are loved. Exhale, left arm lowers, lift the left leg back up to the sky. Exhale, warrior two. So I'm gonna flip myself once again because I like my voice to come to you, not the wall. The wall's not a very good student. It's very stable, it's very grounded, but it doesn't know how to play that much, you know? I shouldn't be talking bad about my wall right now though, with the appliance issues I've had. <laughs> I love you all. Just stay grounded, that's your job. Exhale, reverse your warrior. Let that left hip stay low, reach your fingertips away. Exhale, extended side angle pose. And you know where to go, we were just here. Are you playing with strength or flexibility? If you're with me in strength, really draw the belly button into the spine for three. Bend a little deeper into the front knee and two. 
and one, warrior two, pivoting your feet so your toes are pointing towards the edge of the mat. This time we're going to go into a twist, inhale, arms reach out wide, exhale, hands come down directly underneath your head, left hand stays where it is, right arm reaches up, wrist over wrist. Maybe do an internal rotation of that right arm as your thumb points forward, bend the elbow, the hand can rest on your glutes, or maybe reach all the way around for your thigh, and then allow that other arm to become heavy as you fold forward. You can stay here, or take that left hand, reach it for the right leg, a little twist here, and if you wanna go a little bit more into this pose, I'm gonna face you up to the way you can see it, angle here. So if your left arm is reaching and you want to get that right leg, what you do is let go of the right arm, take your right arm and your head through the hole you created. So you might need to bend the knees, bring it through, reach the right hand for the leg, and then begin to straighten as you twist the rib cage toward that left leg. If that looks ridiculous, close your eyes and imagine you're doing it. It's good enough. Yeah. All right, awesome, unwind, come back through center, wide-legged, downward-facing dog, fingertips reach forward, hips reach back, let your head shake yes or no. Okay, let's twist the other side, right hand underneath the head, left arm reaches up for a twist. So lots of variations for lots of bodies. You know, different poses challenge us in different ways. So maybe you need to bring that top hand and do a half bind here. As you peel the left shoulder away from the ground. Maybe you want to fold forward here as the right hand reaches for the left leg. This might be fully enough for your body. But if you've done this pose hundreds of times and you want to play, take that left arm and your head, pull it through that circle and then reach. So I need to bend that right knee a lot so I can find that leg. Mm -hmm. And then once I find the leg, I'm able to straighten and lift the hips. So don't feel like you have to be in the full expression to be in a pose. You know, you can have your knees bent and hips low for months and months until eventually they can straighten just a little bit. And then just a little bit. One more breath. Awesome. Exhale, release. This time, walking your hands through your legs, fingertips pulling back, 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 fingertips facing away from you. Mm -hmm. And then bringing your hands forward again, dropping down to your knees, preparing for camel pose. Okay. So actually, before we go into camel, I just want to do one more pose, which is really nice to lengthen the front thighs. So coming into reverse tabletop, and you can have your feet really close to your sit bones. I'm sitting on mine basically, because what I'm going to try to do is draw my knees forward. So this is similar to the pose I did earlier where my knees were down and I walked my hands, fingertips facing away from me. Okay. Except okay, so this time we're starting in a different way because it might be more accessible for your body because we can do one leg at a time this way. So bring your hands down. This time we'll have our fingertips either facing away from each other or towards our, he our heels. And then take that left leg down, just the left leg. Right leg stays lifted. Mm -hmm. If that doesn't feel too intense, feel free to walk the feet a little further away. So that right foot is more into tabletop position, left foot comes forward and then back down. And you can play reaching the knee down. Don't worry if it doesn't touch. Feel that lengthening and then switch sides. Maybe you can do both knees at the same time. If you can do both knees at the same time and then walk down to your elbows, top of the head comes down, reach your fingertips, palms together behind you. Keep pulling the knees down, either do one knee at a time or come where I am if you're a little more advanced. For three, two, one. If you came on your head, Elbows come down to the ground to push your forearms back up, 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 up. 
Yay, yay, yay. Now we're down to our knees. Camel pose. Okay. I like that YouTube moved the live chat. It used to be below my video and now it's to the side. So thank you, YouTube, if you hear me. That's very nice of you. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go into several back bend options here. We're gonna start with camel. And for this camel, instead of dumping into our flexibility, we're gonna do strength. Yay, strength, which means we're not reaching back for our feet. We're not reaching back for our low back. We are just gonna pull our sternum away from the hips, okay? And our arms will reach up to the sky. So if you're feeling like you need a little bit more help with your legs, feel free to tuck your toes. Sometimes that keeps your legs alive. Inhale, arms rise. Mm -hmm. Now, your, your knees are your root, they are your feet. So draw your knees down, tuck the tailbone, so we want that nice yoga butt, right? Really squishy and pancakey. That's a yoga butt, it's a good one. This, come on, we're not Kardashians, you know? We got strong glutes, so let's use them. I'm sure they have strong glutes too, but I bet yours are stronger. <laughs> okay, so tuck the tailbone, push the hips forward, keep reaching the arms up. Mm-hmm, hips go forward, stern and lift on the inhale. Lift, lift, lift. Maybe you bring your arms, bend the elbows, reach for those elbows, keep pulling the elbows away. Mm -hmm. You might shake a little bit here. That's okay. We're building back body strength for three. See, I'm not going very far back. I am shaking like crazy. Two. And one. Exhale, release. Untuck. Have a seat. Close your eyes. Find your breath. Soften your jaw. Soften your tongue. Relax the shoulders. Relax the toes. So if that was hard, do it again. <laughs> Unless you're going at 50%, then you can reach back for your low back or your tucked feet. Okay? So camel number two, sit off those heels. Inhale, send your arms up high. And if you want to just do your strength, tuck the tailbone, hips pull forward as your sternum and vertebrae lengthen one at a time. Maybe your hands drop back, find the low back or the glutes, whatever feels nice in your body. Or a little lower for the ankles. We're going to be here for about five breaths wherever you decided to go. And just like we did in flipping the dog and in wilding, can you soften and open your heart area. So feel that, feel up with more space. F-E-E-L, feel it, feel, F-I-L-L. -L. One more breath. Exhale, tilt the hips, untuck the toes, sit back, close your eyes, pause and notice. This is a good part Maybe bring your hands to your heart to cultivate more space in that heart area. So if you're living your life filled with fear right now, or maybe you have for a long time, this is your chance to soften the fear. To breathe in love. You always have this love deep within you. Think about the first time you see a rose grow on your rose bush and how simple and beautiful of an act that is. How that makes you feel. Fill your heart with roses. Okay, we're gonna go into one more camel. Ask your body how it feels. If it's feeling nice and open, maybe you untuck the feet and reach back a little bit further, okay? Before we go anywhere, inhale, lengthen. The knees root, the fingertips reach, the tailbone tucks, and then find your way back into your camel pose. We're gonna be in this camel for eight breaths, so you can really explore. You might let the hips sink back a little bit lower, and then push them forward again as they go back and forward. You might move your fingertips around, so instead of your fingertips reaching around the outside edge, flip the grip, so the fingertips are facing the inside, an external rotation of the arms. 
we're about halfway there. Maybe you want to go a little deeper, walking your hands in towards the inside of your knees or the backs of your hamstrings. Mm -hmm. But don't collapse into that low back. We're finding more space in the heart area, the thoracic spine. Mm -hmm. Two more breaths. Exhale. Beautiful. Sit back on your heels. Maybe cross your ankles to come all the Sorry, way down. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> to the ground. I don't know what Alexa hears. She always thinks I'm talking about her. Let it go, Alexa. Aparigraha. Okay, kick your feet up into the air. And bend the knees. And straighten. Bend the knees and straighten. So we're going to do one final back bend of your choice before we're going into a supine twist in the, the cool down session. So if you're over back bending, place that block underneath the glutes this time, the low back, and allow your feet to kick up into the air for legs up the wall. If you want to go on the bridge, girls, I will feed you in five minutes. I know. If you want to go into bridge, go into bridge. Or if you want to go into wheel, Bring your hands so your fingertips are facing towards the edges of your mat and your thumbs are facing towards your heels. So instead of your fingertips facing your heels, try your thumbs this time. Might be a little more accessible in your wrists. If it's not, that's okay, do what works. Push your arms into the ground so you can rest onto the top of your head. Strong legs and then straighten the arms however much you can. It might be an inch and you do a couple pulses here you might be able to straighten all the way as you pull your chest through your arms and we'll be here for a three. And two. Last breath. Exhale, lower. Beautiful. If your legs are still at the wall, you can stay there. Everybody else, kick your feet up, close your eyes. Soften the shoulders, soften the jaw. Once again, I'm going to give a couple choices here. You can either go into happy baby pose. And don't worry, we're going to do a supine twist in Shavasana right after this. This is your final choice of poses. So if you want to play with the arm balance, you can. If you want to do happy baby, you can. If you want to do plow pose or hug your knees into your chest or drop your feet and pull your knees together, especially if you're having a lot of low back pain right now, having your feet off the mat and bringing your knees together can be really nice. But you pick. I'm going to go into plow. The feet are going to come behind me. And if they can't touch the ground, that's okay. Allow your hands to rest into your low back. About eight to 10 more breaths wherever you are, whatever you're practicing. And try to be in a soft version of it. Go at 30%. Slow and steady breaths. If you chose to go into plow and you're feeling stable, reach your hands towards your feet. Mm -hmm. And then see if you can have your feet slowly travel up the forearms. So you flex the feet, toes are brushing the forearms as your hips begin to lower, one vertebrae at a time. Your head and shoulders might have to lift a little bit mm -hmm. until eventually your legs are facing the sky and then drop down, bend the knees, feet to the ground. Mm -hmm. Arms go out wide. We're going to do a supine twist. Knees draw together as they fall to the left, gazing to your right. If you want to straighten the legs here or cross into eagle legs, Fill it out and explore. Slightly move the hips a little further away from the head. A 
Allow the exhale to get a little longer than your inhale. And then switch sides. Moving your hips slightly over to the left, knees fall to the right. No rush, take your time. Your body will slowly open if you give it the chance. If we rush ourselves into these poses, then we increase the chances of injury and pain. Whereas if we take our time and slowly open up the body. So when we did the camel, we started slow. We didn't go into our deepest back bend. We went one, two, three, and even then, you're not in your deepest back bend. It takes time. And then we went down to the ground and then we really explored. And what works for my body might not work for your body. So I try to get different cues. Inhale, bring your knees up. Hug your knees into your chest. Close your eyes. Shavasana. So it's already one o'clock. I recommend closing your laptop and staying here for the next five or 10 minutes, even 15 if you're feeling it. Have a little bit of meditation. Either listening to your breath or softening your body, doing a body scan. Otherwise, stay here with me for about one minute. Keeping your eyes closed, bringing the awareness to your heart center. And whatever emotions or thoughts may arise, let them be. Don't fixate on them. Don't um, examine them or study them. Just notice. And then when it's ready to go away, let it go. Don't have a conversation with the thoughts there. They're always there. You do not have to entertain them. Say hello. Give it a hug. And let it leave with some love. And if you're feeling the Shavasana, I love you. Have a great day. I will see you next time. Otherwise, reach your arms up overhead. Take a nice deep stretch. Roll onto one side. Slowly push yourself up to a comfortable seat. Palms together, eyes closed. Notice the quality of your breath, how the nervous system feels, how your body feels. Take a deep inhale through the nose, audible sigh through the mouth. If you'd like to join me in one ohm, feel free. Take a deep inhale. light and shine, hands back to heart, be light and love. Namaste. Thank you all so much for joining me. A happy Mother's Day, since I didn't get to say that to all of the mothers out there. I appreciate you. I know how hard and sometimes ungrateful it can be, <laughs> but it's worth it, right? All right. I love you all.
Have a great Monday and I will see you next Monday. I have a um, live Zoom class tomorrow, 8 a.m. through Breathe. Just go to Mind Body, sign up. It's Power Flow, so it'll be a little more intense, a little more challenging, uh, a little more fun.